Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test Tube Plus today. I am Trace and I'm here with my friend Kyle Tierman. Hello Kyle. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming out. Today we're gonna to talk about waves. Kyle is a surfer and a YouTuber and he's here to tell us and educate us a bit about the giant things that float through the ocean. We're gonna talk a little bit about what waves are, how they're formed, how they spread all over the world, and a little bit about seasickness. You're gonna understand seasickness just a bit better. You're never gonna look at the ocean, I think, the same way after this episode. So make sure you subscribe here on YouTube, you check us out, and stick around for all of the episodes of this series. But first, what are waves? Like, what are, their, what are they for? What are they for? Waves have a whole lot of different purposes. I mean, uh, stop me if I'm wrong, Kyle, but I'm gonna run through some things really quick, okay? They clean organisms near the surface and help oxygenate the water beneath. They work with tides and currents to carry nutrients around the ocean and kind of move those around. They create habitats for animals on shorelines, so it keeps things wet, but not so wet that they're underwater, you know, for plant life and things. They erode sediment from shorelines and move them from one place to another. Fish, whales, and all sorts of animals, aquatic birds, they all follow the food that the waves are gonna bring. And as we've talked about earlier in Test Tube Plus, uh, in our energy episodes, we can even use waves to create power. So what did I miss? What, what, what else waves do? Oh, so much. We can go so deep with this one. Is that um, a wave pun? I think that's a wave pun. <laughs> that's a wave pun. <laughs> um, well, there's there's waves and there's there's also a lack of waves that sure. affect a lot of a lot of the ocean. I mean, just recently, the Dungeness crab crabbing season was postponed because there was an algal bloom that the crabs digested, and it was a demoic acid event, which basically made them poisonous to eat. So you might not have had crab in California for your Thanksgiving feast. I didn't even know that that was a thing until I moved to California. That you it's, had crab. It's totally a thing. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, that our sounds, family was shattered. Sounds delicious. Yeah. So the algae could bloom up because the waves weren't kind of spreading it out and moving it around. And on top of that, it was a little warmer because the waves weren't moving the heat and distributing it around as well. Correct? Well, it was also El Nino. So right now, the Pacific Ocean is going through some some crazy times because we have El Nino and we also have this thing that scientists have called the warm blob, which is just sitting in the North Pacific. It's separate than El Nino, but it's been here since 2014 and it's it's heating the ocean up um which you know so that's one example of, of algae bloom um it's creating it caused these phytoplankton to go crazy that's lots of times what creates red tide that's what can make you sick as a the, surfer if you go out you start sneezing if you have al um allergies to algae yeah <laughs> um but yeah i mean it affects everything yeah just for people that don't know el nino is uh, it's caused by weak trade winds they keep warmer water near the eastern sea basin which is causing heavy rains floods it changes weather patterns all over the world and uh it can create floods in peru it can create droughts in india and indonesia it affects everything it changes everything yeah i mean you can picture it like so trade winds are the predominant wind that come off of the west coast of california all the way down to chile and they're blowing all the way across the pacific ocean which is moving that warm water over to australia over to asia and at the same time it's creating upwelling so a lot of that cold water is moving back towards california sure right so that warm weather is creating storms over there and El Nino is, is a lack of trade winds. So a lot of that warm water stays on our side of the pond, mm -hmm. which creates bigger storms, bigger rains over here, as we've experienced down in Mexico, all the way up through California and Washington. Um, and it's creating a really dry season over on the other side of um, uh, on the other side of the pond. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So El Nino is a cyclical thing. It happens all the time and usually peaks about this time of year, like late in 2015 when we're recording this, and it can last for months and months and months. And it, because of that, it changes all of our weather patterns. We're wetter here in the United States, North America, South America, um, and then it's drier over in Asia. So I think you nailed it for sure. But what are the effects, I mean, we're humans, we're very human focused. We wanna talk about like the weather and how it affects our homes and our jobs and our livelihoods. But what about like the ocean, how does, how does El Nino affect, say, I don't know, fish and coral and you know, so on and so forth? Yeah, I mean, it has, it affects everything, really. I mean, 
okay, it's creating bigger waves, mm -hmm. right? Because we're great getting- Great for surfing. Great for surfing, right? right? We're getting some of the biggest waves California has, has seen in years. Right now, tomorrow, um, the biggest swell, one of the biggest swells ever recorded in the North Pacific is hitting the California coast. Yeah. There's something like 66 feet at 17 seconds. Just to stop you for a second, Kyle, uh, you don't have to understand what, what was it, 66 feet at? 17 seconds. 17 seconds. You don't have to understand what that is right now, everybody. We're gonna come back to that. Just write it down, keep it in your little brain boxes, because by the end of the series, you're gonna understand it. 66 feet, 17 seconds. This wave energy is affecting animals, because if you go diving down um, in a kelp forest or something like that on a flat day, it's gonna look completely different than if if you're going down there and there's a lot of swell moving around. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just, it's like a really windy day. <laughs> I so mean, the it, kelp it affects, forest it affects would be habitat. I would say that the biggest and probably most disturbing thing that El Nino is affecting right now is coral. Because okay. right now there is a global coral bleaching event, which basically means that we're killing coral. Ugh. Another effect of El Nino is it's affecting fish migration. So mm -hmm. we're seeing fish up here in Northern California that we very rarely see. Someone saw a wahoo mm -hmm. up in Northern California. We never get those. I don't know what a wahoo is, but it sounds fun. It's fun. Yeah, yeah it's it's a big fish. That, yeah. <laughs> there's a fish taco na stand <laughs> named after it. Okay. But we're also getting um, a lot of juvenile great white sharks Whoa. in our bay. So In the bay? Not just in the ocean, but in San Francisco Bay. In the Bay. Wow. And um, a lot of the the juveniles, I mean, sharks hang out around California a lot. We're in the Red Triangle, but um, my friend went up in a helicopter recently and looked down over c certain bays and they were seeing a lot of great white sharks. A lot of small ones, juveniles Whoa. that will go in um, for warm water. Yeah, and so because of the water is warmer than it would have been normally at this time of year, we'll find fish that we wouldn't normally see, like these big great whites. It affects everything and El Nino is allowing some fish um, to flourish and it's killing some. So, yeah. it, I mean, it's just, it affects everything. Yeah, so when it comes to waves and it comes to how they are affected by both each other and the general weather patterns. They can grow, they can shrink, and all of those things will affect how we then have to experience the ocean itself. It's very much a changing ecosystem. And to be honest, because of that, it's super important that we get as much information as we can about waves, and that's what we're gonna talk about tomorrow, like what a wave is and how we're starting to categorize and track them. So make sure you come back and check out more Test Tube Plus, subscribe so you get all of our episodes. And while you're at it and clicking around on YouTube, make sure you check out Kyle and I's episode over on D News where we talk all about waves. And I do mean all about them. It was a lot of research to try and figure this out that Kyle brought over to us. It was super cool. So make sure you check that out. Additionally, you can come find us both on Twitter. I'm at Trace Dominguez. Kyle is at Kyle underscore T-Man. Maybe you can talk to him about surfing and waves and stuff. Sure, he knows all about it. Thanks for tuning in.